This video is entitled Human Factors Fitz's Law. I'm a Jim Renault, PhD from Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this additional information that's not in our book chapter, but I want to add to, to this topic. In the 1950s, there was a psychologist named Paul Fitz who was researching the time it takes people to do things in factories, to pick up a part and put it over here or to, or to pick up something here and, uh, and, and to actually pick up and manipulate real-world objects. And uh, Dr. Fitz uh, d did a lot of research into human factors and the way humans move and the way our hand-eye coordination works. And he figured out, well, we all kind of know this, but he was the one that created a set of formulas to describe how long it takes for a user, a human, to pick something up. And what he figured out was that people were slower. It was slower to pick something up that's further away. Well, that kind of makes sense because you got to move your arms and you got to kind of find the target as it's further away. And he also found that picking up small things takes longer. So if you have two objects that are the same distance away from you and one is large and one is small, it's going to be quicker to pick up the large object than the small object at the same distance. Um, so he basically said that there's a, a direct correlation here between speed and accuracy because think about a distant object, you've got to be more accurate, and think about a smaller object, you have to be more accurate. Now Fitz's Law doesn't deal with continuous motion, how long it takes to, to move something from one point to another, but just how long it takes to acquire a target, how to, how to pick something up. And his formula looks like this. It's ID, and ID is, is short for index of difficulty. ID equals the log base 2, so the logarithm based 2, of 2 times the distance to the object divided by the width of the object. So we take whatever the distance is in units, inches, meters, millimeters, feet, uh, whatever, and we divide it by the width of the object in the same unit, um, inches, feet, whatever, and we then calculate the logarithm base 2. Not LOG, not log 10, not log E, but logarithm based Two, and this returns us a number, and this number represents uh, the bits of, of how long are, are the difficulty, the index of difficulty, to pick up or to find an object. Again, there's the same formula, and it calculates the index of difficulty. Now, the ID should be used to compare alternatives. Yeah, it's not really an absolute number to publish an ID and say it's an ID of three. Well, that really doesn't mean anything. But if we have a facility or we have a piece of software or we have a design and we're saying the index of difficulty is least for this one, it's more for this one, and it's the most for this third alternative, then we can make a choice as to which one maybe the user could do quicker. Wouldn't that make sense that if we were calculating the index of difficulty for several different scenarios, then we could decide which scenario would be better for us. So that's kind of, kind of what it is. It's not really an absolute unit or measure that you can just publish the index of difficulty. The index of difficulty most often is used when comparing multiple alternatives. For instance, here's an example. Our stick figure here is got needs to pick up these four objects. Object A, object B, object C, and object D. Object A has a width of three units and is five units away. You can see I've got D and W labeled for each of the units. And the index of difficulty then 
for object A would be 1.74, or the logarithm base 2 of 2 times 5, twice the distance divided by the width, so that would be 1.74. The index of difficulty for picking up the little tiny object that's a little further away would be 2.8. So you can see that the object further away is going to, the B object is going to take a lot longer to acquire and grab that target. Um, the C object is really far away. It's, it's double the distance that A is, but because it's bigger, um, it's still quicker than, than picking up the B object. And the D object, while it's not the closest object, it's actually six units away because it's bigger than the unit that's than the object that's five units away, it would be the quickest. So stick figure man there or stick figure human there would be able to grab object D first, A second, C third, and B would take the longest for stick figure human to acquire the target or to pick up that object kind of neat to think about that we can algorithmically come up with some numbers and, and make predictions about which would be the fastest, which would be the slowest. A lot of our calculators, like the Windows calculator built onto Windows and um, uh, formulas in Excel, probably don't have the, the base 2 um, uh, logarithm. Uh, as, as an available option to calculate a logarithm based 2. So if your software will let you calculate a base 10 logarithm, then calculate log n divided by log 2, or if it'll let you calculate a log on the natural numbers, uh, e, Euler's number, then you could do log n e or log e, sub n, a log e of n divided by log e of 2, and that will give you a log 2 of n. So you just can't use the log function in most calculators and spreadsheets. You have to use a log 2, a base 2 logarithm, but you can calculate that very easily using this kind of formula. And, and, and that's uh, you should know this, but I just wanted to make sure that that was included in our discussions. We're not using... 10 base logarithms or E base logarithms, we're using 2 base logarithms. So instead of picking up objects, instead of picking up pennies or coins from the floor or, or car parts in a factory, let's now take this to the design of a computer user interface. Imagine you have a mouse pointer here and you've got buttons on the screen or target areas you want the user to click on. Well, that's really similar, isn't it, to Fitz's law of picking up parts and picking up objects. Also notice that a button's width is really the line through the object upon the line that we're moving. So as the mouse moves along this line, the width of the button here is actually a, a kind of a diagonal line through. So the button appears larger than the actual height of the button or the actual dimension of the button. Um, if you're coming from this way, the width of the button would be the full width of the button. But if you're coming at an angle, then the width of the button is is kind of an, of an angle slice through that button. Also, think about if you have a menu like on a Macintosh that's at the very top of the screen where the mouse can go past, but it doesn't actually go past. Um, what's the width of, of a menu? Uh, the width of a button? Uh, round buttons versus square buttons versus um, other shaped buttons, rectangular buttons. Um, so we've got to think about our distance from where the user's mouse currently is to where the user's mouse is in the future. So, so that's, the, that's the distance we're doing, and, and it's probably to the center of the button would, would be the distance. The center of the target would be the distance and then the width. There was some research done back in the uh, late 1980s and early 1990s, and one of the things that came out of that research in dealing with computer interaction and interactions with, with, uh, with screens and, and mouses and pointers was that Fitz's Law was reformulated and the formulation 
formulation was known as Shannon's formulation. Shannon's formulation states that the index of difficulty for pointing tasks, not picking up tasks, but pointing tasks, I want to point at this, I want to point at this, I want to point at that, are more accurate to use the formula index of difficulty equals log base 2 of distance divided by width plus 1. So divide distance by width, add 1, and then calculate the logarithm base 2 to calculate the index of difficulties for uh, target, pointing at targets. So if we have our same example that we did earlier with Shannon's formulation, you can see here, um, I calculated the index of difficulties for those four objects again, and you can see that Shannon's difficulty of Shannon's index says that D would be the easiest to target, A would be the next easiest to target, C would be the third easiest to target, and B would be the slowest to target. Now this this number doesn't actually represent a specific time. It doesn't represent a value. They call the index of difficulty represented in bits. Um, but uh, the, the index of difficulty really is just used to compare the difficulty. Because some users are fast, some users are slow, some users have better hand-eye coordination and acuity and others don't. So, so this index of difficulty just tries to compare what it would take and to compare the alternatives. Go out online um, as soon as our video is done here and and type into your favorite search engine um, Fitz's Law and it does have F-I-T-T-S apostrophe S. It's Fitz's Law which is a little little funny, but there was his spelling of his name. So go type in Fitz's Law and look for an online application that will let you test your speed. Test how fast you are at clicking targets of different sizes. This uh, SimonWalner.at um, website, and if you search for, using your favorite search engine, visualizing Fitz's Law, you'll see this link very very quickly fire it up and you'll get a program screen that looks something like this and you start and basically what you're going to be doing is you'll be clicking circles that appear in this circle and the circle will be bigger or smaller and the targets will be bigger and smaller and you've got to click like 20 targets as quick as you can at the end you'll get a chart showing the index of difficulty for each of them versus the time it took you for each of them and you'll see that in fact they they both will follow a straight line of index of difficulty versus time now again different people will have different times and their lines will be uh, you know their their base time or their average time will be different but the uh, index of difficulty and looking at, at this and actually seeing it in real life is really kind of cool. In preparation of this, um, I did use the Wikipedia page on Fitz's Law as well as a design called Fitz's Law, a page called Fitz's Law on the interactiondesign.org website, as well as Simon Walner's fabulous um, Fitz uh, practice test. This concludes my brief video on human interaction and Fitz's Law. This video is copyright 2020 by James Imrino, Ph.D. All rights are reserved. I'd like to say thank you for watching and wear your mask when you go out in public.